Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Click Capital, your go-to channel for all the latest market data analysis and charts. And what a rotation we had here today. Look at the moves in healthcare, utilities and consumer defensive uh, versus the more cyclical stuff like the industrials, consumer cyclical and even big tech. Actually, tech came off harder today than most other sectors out there. And those moves lower was because we had some economic data today. The ADP employment chain, which measures payroll data for about 24 million private employees, came in a lot weaker than expected. So consensus was 200,000, actually came in 145,000. And we're seeing those PMIs and manufacturing employment come in a lot lower than expected as well and almost going into contracting territory. So readings above 50 means that it's expanding and below 50 is contracting. And so even though that caused rates to fall, which has typically been good for tech stocks, um, like I've been saying, I think the weaker economic data and moving towards a recession, the lower personal and business spending and investment that comes with the recession, I think will overwhelm um, the positive side effects of lower rates and I think that's what we're seeing in the price action today in tech stocks which I'll get into a bit more later on and we've got a shortened trading week this week with Easter on Friday so we've got those jobless claims coming out on Thursday then early Saturday morning we've got the unemployment rate and non-farm payrolls so that'll be really key because we're starting to see some signs of a weakening labor market and that's kind of like the last domino to fall um, before us to get into a recession when you get that unemployment rate above 4% and that'll take the unemployment rate above that 20 bar moving average which when that happens coming off a real low like we are here pretty much always move into recession especially with all the other indicators point to recession as well and we can see that here in the recession risk indicators so out of a dozen indicators it's just trucks and jobs that are the last dominoes uh, to fall everything else is pointing towards uh, upcoming recession so that upcoming jobs data will be a big one to help the market determine how close uh, the recession is. And funnily enough, uh, fear and greed actually ticked up a little bit today uh, to 53 in high neutral territory. And once again, not a lot of people buying puts out there, so not a whole lot of fear out there. And there's some really funny uh, price action today. There's some big institutions making some big moves here. I mean, look at AT&T. It was only up 1.2%, but a million contracts traded, 98% of them calls. We saw, And we saw a similar thing with Verizon, only up 1.1%, but 900,000 contracts, 96% calls. So someone's loading up on the calls and these cheap uh, defensive names that have high dividend yields. And we also saw a lot of calls in Tesla, 59% on big 2 million contracts. Amazon, 66% calls. And Google, 68% calls as well. So some really funny price action going on out there. So looking like some big uh, repositioning going on in the market today. And Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson made it onto the list today with 78% and 81% calls as well. So some big money being moved around here. And those call options could well and truly be exercised. And it looks like dark pool buyers are starting to dip here. We've come down to 45%. So starting to get into bearish territory from the dark pool index. And a definite little bit of a downtrend here. Corporate insiders as well. They are not buying here. And actually yesterday they picked up their sales again. So it looks like support for this market could be starting to wane. Probabilities of a Fed hike remain about the same as yesterday. Currently 56% chance that we're going to pause at the next meeting in May. And I've got some interesting charts for you here today. This one here, this middle line is indexed to the October low we've had and historic um, bear market bottoms. And so this purple line is the average forward earnings. And here we are, the green one, the current forward earnings. So typically... What we see is three to six months post a bear market low, um, earnings per share start to bottom then increase because the stock market's typically six or so months ahead of the economy and earnings. So it makes sense that the stock market can see earnings uh, bottoming increasing and the prices of the stock market bottom before that. We're not seeing that this time. In last earnings seasons, we actually saw earnings continue to contract and I think it was around 67% of companies beat on earnings, which is below about 77%. So still trending down. And we've got Q1 earnings season starting again next week with the banks. So the banks are probably going to come off 
uh, with their earnings per share and analysts will have probably have to adjust their forecasts on the banks downward down as well and depending on the rest of the market if earnings are continuing to trend lower then that's just increasing the chance that October last year was not the bottom in the market and again another chart uh, saying the same thing so this line here is bear market bottoms and the Fed funds rate is typically uh, cut following bear market bottoms and of course we've still seen that being hiked and the Fed well they've hinted a little bit at a pause uh, we've still got a lot of Fed speakers saying they still need to hike and again another chart saying the same thing uh, post bottom six month analysis normally we see the S&P 500 drip pretty hard so far it hasn't had a huge bounce and typically post bottom you see the Fed funds come off and the yield curves jump back to positive territory that's pretty much all opposite here. So just another sign pointing that October last year was not the bottom, which I think myself, I still think we can see S&P 500, 3000, uh, maybe sometime later this year. So Walmart's aiming for 65% of their stalls to be automated by 2026. And as the country's largest employer of 1.7 million workers, kind of makes you wonder what happens to a lot of them. They say they're going to try and keep them, but if they've got robots doing a lot of the work, it's hard to see that happening and they've already starting to lay off people. So it's an interesting dynamic and I think more um, we see of this towards automation in the upcoming years, the more the idea of a universal basic income will have to make sense. And it kind of just changes um, everything, you know, what we've used for 100 years to measure unemployment and things like that. It's kind of changing the whole fabric of society and the, the workplace, really. So I thought that was interesting to point out. And regional banks still under pressure. Western Alliance sold off hard today. And they gave a bit of a preview of their first quarter results. And they said deposits fell by $6 billion in the first quarter. And I'll get more into this later on in this video. And in another interesting development, we've had Apple Insiders offload about $70 million worth of stock in the last couple of weeks, including Tim Cook, CEO, offloaded almost 10 million shares. We can see up here. And Insiders are typically really good at selling the top because they kind of cause it by you know adding supply to the market and it kind of dents investor sediment and we've had this pretty good run up in apple so far this year and i'm becoming more convinced that we're nearing some sort of top here in apple and since apple's such a big part of the market um, physically in the indices and nasdaq and s p 500 but also as overall market sediment i think these insiders offloading shares is a bit telling and remember once companies make it to the biggest in the world, they, it's very rare that they stay there. In fact, I don't think any company has stayed at the top for more than a couple of decades. You can go back in time and see that, you know, from in the 80s with IBM, then in the 90s with General Electric, then in the 2000s with ExxonMobil. Now, Apple's going to has been up there for a little while now, too. I would be very surprised if we're looking at this in 10, 15 years and Apple is still number one. Typically, once uh, stocks make it to the biggest in the world, they've got nowhere to go but down um, as they get complacent and they're built on old systems and cultures and newer, more fresh, modern, hungry businesses come and take the top prize from them. Okay, that's it for data and news today. Let's hop on over to the charts. So just a slight down day today. You've got S&P under 4,100 here on lower highs, lower lows, and the NASDAQ came off about 1%. And the Dow actually held up for a slight gain. And smalls are still looking really weak here. Micro caps coming down to their lows. This is Canada turned around. FTSE still under the 50. DAX looks to have turned. Nikkei in Japan had a big down day yesterday. Aussie kind of holding up there, as is China. Volatility land is not worried at all. Pretty steep uh, contango here, going from 17 up to 23, six months out. So market's really not worried down here. There's not a lot of people buying options. And we are seeing that uh, volatility risk premium over realized volatility pretty low. And that can be indicating a good contrarian signal to get a bit more cautious and maybe add some hedges and the opposite's true i mean the look at the 13th of march here the volatility risk premium um, shot up and if we just go back to the s p 500 that kind of uh, timed the swing low there as well so maybe here i think we could be getting close to a little bit of a top if we haven't seen it already 
got bond market volatility shot back up to 153 on the move and that move over VIX premiums coming up to all-time highs here I'll just go out to a three month chart for you this is as high as we've seen uh, for a long time the only thing real higher was back in the GFC 2008 and that premium was high going into it you know in mid late 2007 bond market volatility was moving up a lot against equity volatility. So again, this is one of the big interesting dynamics in this market is how high bond market volatility is versus equity volatility. Put call ratio is low. Not many people buying puts out there. And breadth looks to have turned 71% stocks above their 20 day average, 42% above their 50 and 53 above their 200. And looking at stocks making new highs, this is ETFs. And we'll just go out to a two week chart for you. So we can see here as we we're rallying into 2020. So we can see here as we we're rallying into 2020. Then we had COVID. Then the huge bounce off COVID. And this actually topped in Feb 21. The market itself didn't top until late 21. But we had that breadth weakening all for that second half of 21 with that huge divergence. You can see that NYSE and NASDAQ. So structurally speaking, just looking under the hood, you know, we had mega cap tech really holding up this market, but most stocks here, they're just not hitting new highs. It's hard to have a market break out and rally when under the hood structurally, the breadth is just so weak. And look at this moves and the spread today. This one we've been following here, the gross cyclical sectors versus defensive off 3% today. Let me just go out to a weekly chart for you. So we came out and hit that level that we hit in August last year when we sold off hard after that. We had that strong rally up from July into it. And we've seen this year, we've had the growth cyclical move really hard against the defensive, but that just came off hard today. And look at that move. Looks like it's rejected back down and resuming a downtrend maybe. And just staying on the weekly chart, high beta versus low volatility stocks came off hard today too, 3%. And that looks to have resumed a downtrend. And growth versus value. Looks to like it maybe we have turned here. And NASDAQ versus S&P came and hit this resistance zone. It's been very stretched. Tech's had such a great run this year. We've seen all these banger cap stocks up 20, 30, 50, 90% like NVIDIA. May have turned here, may have peaked. Back down to the daily chart. Gold did well today against stocks. Internationals came off a little bit. Saw those yield curves spike back up towards positive territory. Bit of risk come out of the market with junk bonds coming off versus treasuries there. And the two year got down pretty low here today, down to 364 and the 10 year as well. Looks like we may have broken through this big support zone that we've been watching here. So that weaker jobs market and manufacturing data that's coming in, um, this is the market just pricing in a recession and saying that the Fed is gonna have to cut. We're looking at Fed fund futures here. They haven't sold off as much as government bonds. Um, so they're staying in the near term, the Fed still hasn't given an indication that they're about to pause, but we're looking in December now. We got down to 4% here today on Fed fund futures in December. And once again, I think the bond market um, will prove right again versus the Fed. And with those lower rates, we saw treasuries have a nice move up today. Here's TLT. So Feb, uh, March 10, that's when news of Silicon Valley broke. Um, that is going to be taken over by the government. We had that big move up and we kind of just consolidated, pulled back to the 50 and we've popped out again here. And investment grade bonds are holding up pretty well and high yield looks to have turned back down after we had that really big move up last week. Dollars holding on here at 101, this key support level. I think this could break. Bitcoin just consolidating and Ethereum managed to find new highs here today. Looks like it's creeping towards $2,000. Over to commodities, just kind of holding flat there today. Gold sitting flat, silver, copper held there, and crude just sitting there calling up in a small range. Little bounce here in Natty Gas. Over to the stock sectors, quite a lot of red out there, but big dispersion. I mean, look at this move in utilities today. Look at that price action up 2.5%, which is huge for utilities on big volume as well, ripping up higher there. Same with uh, staples, really looks like we're gonna walk the line here. And healthcare, big strong move on volume here as well. And we saw home builders come off and other cyclical stuff like retail off 2%, discretionary off 2%, all the high valued stuff, ARC off 3.5% and semis off 1.5%. So, Big rotation out there today, which has been the opposite of what we've been seeing 
all year. BlackRock trending down there on a lower low. JP Morgan lower. Exxon had a good day. Energy is looking good. Tesla's coming off 185, 3%. Now well under its 50 and looking more by the day that this was a fake out. Um, kind of would have caught a lot of people on this really strong update that finished near its high on big volume. Then it's just done a complete green to red flip. So that could be telling for not only the stock, but the market as well. When you see uh, big leaders like Tesla and Apple kind of turn, we want to watch the price action in them. And remember, we had Apple rally over 30% year to date, and now we're seeing the insiders offload $70 million worth of stock up here. I think they're right that the stock is a little high here. And if we go to our fundamental chart and just look at valuation, so we've got fair value at 140. So 43% overvalued and i mean look at that run from 120s up to the 160s here so i think this could be a good time to take profits on apple for those who are long microsoft kind of just sitting up there as well amazon came off hard 2.7 percent google's just kind of flat and nvidia had this gap down a little bit of a dip buy here do you have this big divergence on nvidia you can see our hidden divergence indicator pointing down now and from that same point of time, price is pointing up. So the momentum is definitely starting to stall and weaken. It's not a huge obvious sign of a top just yet. Um, it's a more subtle one if we do get it. It's not really a blow off top here. And kind of still a bit too early to tell. I mean, we did have this volume on a dip buy. We look at a 15 minute chart. So we did gap down sell off hard on this volume. Um, I think the real test will be if we fill this gap we fill that gap then it looks like the momentum's still there how have we struggled to get back up into the 270s here maybe it has turned amd came off hard too 3.4 percent netflix just had a little bit of a dip and over to the meme stocks um look at big bear ai and c3 ai down another 15 percent today so that short seller did such a good job to release his report up here and this could be more telling of the sediment overall in AI stocks. This is some really bearish price action we're seeing here. And this stock that's had a great run. I mean, the start of the year, we're down at $10. We've got up to 34 I wouldn't be surprised to see this back down under 10 in the next month or two. Rest of the main stocks are pretty weak as well. The banks today, still under pressure. We've got First Republic down 2.5%, PacWest down 46 and Western Alliance so we've got bank earnings coming out next week. They always kick off the earnings season and that'll be really closely watched. Um, we're probably going to see EPS come down and their forecasts and we'll just be looking from the commentary from CEOs of how bad things really are for, the, for their banks and getting the latest look at all their numbers. So there could be a bit of volatility in the banks and market coming in next week. And the big guys look like they're trading weak as well. Look at Schwab coming down to lows here as well. Just such a big slide in this stock. So the bank's not out of the woods yet. And that's a look at all the overall categories and assets in the market today. So maybe we've put in the top here. I mean, there is some indications that we have. NASDAQ came off a bit harder today. We've seen that weaker jobs markets data. Smalls look to be moving down. The bank's still in trouble. We do have really low volatility, but that could be a contrarian signal. Um, seeing the breadth move down and that huge move in the spreads today. You look at that daily move in the spreads there today and high beta versus low volatility. We may have turned, um, kind of hard to say, and we still have that you know bullish seasonality in April. So I suspect there'll just be more of this consolidation and mess going forward. And if we do see weak jobs data tomorrow and Saturday, I suspect we could sell off a bit further SP come back down to 4,000 around its 50 bar. And with the bank earning seasons next week, that could really uh, get things moving in one direction. I just find it hard to believe the market could clean break above 4,200 here, given everything that's going on. However, it's the Fed balance sheet has a big effect on it as well. You we can see how much the market's been correlating with the balance sheet since COVID. So we've got the fair value model at 4030. And if the Fed were to taper their balance sheet. I think that will continue to act as a strong magnet for the price as well. So for now, it still looks like around this 41 level is acting at like a bit of resistance and a bit of a roof on price. And I think we'll just chop around uh, depending on that jobs data if it comes in a lot weaker 
than expected. I think we could sell off pretty hard here. So I just continue to remain market neutral in this sideways market. And that's all I got for you today. Thanks very much for tuning in and for you guys hitting the like button and dropping comments. I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you again tomorrow for the last day of this short trading week. Take care. Cheers.